Welcome to The Photographer Show, where we talk to you, the everyday photographers in the photo focus community, about your love of photography and dig into some of the fun, nerdy stuff we all love <laughs> about the art and craft of photography. My name is Scott Wyden-Kivowitz, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Lori Novak. Hey, Lori. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, The Photographer Show is presented by Tamron. Be sure to check out instant savings on select Tamron lenses for your DSLR or mirrorless camera. Go to tamron-usa.com. And today, we are talking with Todd Higgins. Hey, Todd, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Todd Higgins. I live in Duluth, Minnesota, uh, and landscape photographer there uh and around i do travel a bit for my my day job uh but for the most part i try to sh photograph you know north shore duluth minnesota great lakes area uh and that's that's me in a nutshell <laughs> Awesome. Um, so I, I'm actually going to come back to the whole Minnesota thing in a little bit because there's a, some, something interesting that I want to share with you. But um, what was, before we dive into that, uh, the first question we ask everybody is what was your first camera? My first camera I stole from my father was uh, Minolta <laughs> SRT 101. Um, he had one that he bought at the, you know, the Army PX when he was in the army and it sat in his closet for years. And when I was a little kid, like six or seven, I would just play with it as a toy. Like I would assemble it and put it together and put the hood on the 200 millimeter lens and pretend to be a spy. <laughs> uh, and that camera just <laughs> sat nice. around for years. And I just eventually like in high school, I just picked it up and started using it as a camera. So that was, that was my first camera, Minolta SRT. And I lost it <laughs> in moves once. And I had to go oh. out and, and replace it. I found, I found, a, I think it was in Charlotte, North Carolina. I found another one with a 58 millimeter lens and I bought that to replace it. So I still have one. Nice. Um, <laughs> so about the whole uh, putting a, a lens hood on and on a long lens to make it look like it. So I get to do that for real um, when I do proposal photography. And I, I actually... When I have my 7200 lens and I throw the lens hood on just because I can, even though I don't need it, <laughs> yep. because because I'm so far away and it does make me feel more like a spy with it on. So I totally get it. Um, yeah. as, a, as a grown man, as a grown man, I still do it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I will. I'll still do it on occasion as well. Just it just looks so much more impressive with a hood on there. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Um, so so what's the camera using these days? Uh, is it, does it happen to be so Sony? Uh, it does not. It is. Uh, I am uh, <laughs> okay. shooting a Canon EOS R, uh, and I'm Ooh, shooting that right nice. now because I dropped my 5D Mark IV in a river a few months ago. <laughs> oh no! So I had to replace it. <laughs> is it was it completely <laughs> unsavable? Uh, it the screen doesn't turn on anymore. It will power up, and it still takes pictures, but I can't see anything. Like the screen back screen doesn't come on, and, and you can so not terribly useful. So it's almost a film camera. It's almost, right. it's almost a film camera. That's exactly right. There's none of the metering. I can't see any of that. There's, there's no, there's no EDF on it so either. So I can't see meters or histograms, any of it. Yeah. <laughs> It, it would be a, it would be a fun project though to, to photograph things with when you have no idea what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's kind of, I still do it. I have an old. I also have a Yoshika D, like a twin lens reflex. I take that out every once. I love shooting with that thing. It's great because yeah. you eventually nice. you get a feel for where things are. I mean, or how many clicks it takes to get to where you want. You know. Yeah, like, exactly. So not being able to see. You know, it would be interesting. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think, what is it? Leica did that. They released a camera with no screen on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. They sure did. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they can get away with it. Yes. <laughs> People will still buy it. <laughs> yeah, right. We're going to it. <laughs> We're gonna take features away <laughs> and charge you more. <laughs> yeah. If if uh, if uh, Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Olympus, they did it, nope. people are going to just be no. like, what are you doing? We're not going to nope. buy your equipment anymore. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So um, one, one of the bands that I was in in my previous life was named after a town in Minnesota in Minnesota called Fairmont. OK, um, I had a chance. I had a chance to tour Minnesota and enjoyed the sites. Um, so I'm curious and I think you even mentioned this, but I'm curious, being that you are from such a beautiful state, do you try to explore only Minnesota for the most part or do you lean toward to trying to explore outside of your home state? 
Uh, I well, because of my job, which is is a lot of travel, I'm forced to explore outside of my state. So <laughs> when I get home, I love sticking to home. Like I just I I get get on old highway 61 and I'll just drive north for a day and wherever I stop is where I stop. I, so I, I like to explore home a lot. And just, just like the last year has been really great for that. Just being able to get out and find new places within an hour of my house has been really exciting. So um, yeah, and you've got, you've got a vast, uh, a vast landscape of, uh, of, of things to explore in, yeah. in, in Minnesota. It's, yeah, we've uh, got great woods, waterfalls everywhere. That's because you know, right. I, yeah. love, I love water over rocks. It's my one of my favorite things. <laughs> my <laughs> wife says that's my specialty. And we're going to be looking. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be looking at some of those today. <laughs> um, so very exciting. You do, stuff. though. You um, have a knack for picking out the scenes within, yeah. like, within the overall picture. That's what I've yeah. seen so far in the community is that you you have a knack for picking out the scenes, but you also, your images, and I said this in a comment bef on one of the images, you have a really good way of showing, um, it, it just, the, the, the images say like, this is Minnesota, right? Like you can tell, I mean, you might not be able to tell where exactly it is or whatever, right. but they're, they're very much of the area, you know, you can, you just get a really good feel for the area where you are from your images. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, yeah, cause that's, that's what I'm, you know, hoping to convey is just like, this is, this is the beauty of the area I'm, I'm in. And like, I, you know, that's kind of the, the point of it for me is just getting out there and exploring it and sharing it. So sure. Awesome. Um, so we're going to get back to rocks in a little bit. Um, <laughs> but for now, I'm curious, you're, so you have a portfolio of, Photographs and some time lapse videos, which obviously are made up of photographs too. Right. Um, so I'm curious: is time lapse photography something that's new to you? Something you've been doing a while? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, time lapse is is relatively new to me, and I'm really, I'm really, I mean, like, I'm still pretty bad at it, but I'm <laughs> loving it. I'm like getting into in into it a little more and more. Um, also, finding out they can potentially be an expensive side oh, yeah. side jaunt photography. <laughs> but uh, yeah so it's it's relatively new to me and I'm, I I enjoy it because one you get that kind of that motion and and the video aspect to it that's great it's a little broader story mm -hmm. but you also have the great potential to get a single still image out of that because I mean at the end of the you, you know on the ESR you're nearly an 8k video file by the time you're done with that so so can you talk a little bit about your about your your process? Are you doing it using the built-in time lapse settings of the camera? Are you using other things? Are you, like can you talk about the yeah? The I, just, I shoot. I just shoot uh, with an intervalometer, just a bunch of uh, you know individual frames, and then I usually end up editing in a combination of of Lightroom and LR time lapse, uh, and and put okay. stitching together there. Uh, the and are you? Are you are you mostly uh, stationary or using like, are you moving the, the camera around using a slider? Or I do have or? a, I have a GVM, which is great video maker slider, which it was for what it cost is impressive. Little slider. It's just, you know, there's a simple little, little rig that just no, no pan or tilt on it. And it just kind of slides. So I bought a little ball head, but it will, it will do an incline impressively. So I do a little bit of motion with a slider occasionally. And uh, to the point where I'm learning that, you know, just putting it on a slider doesn't make your time lapse better. You got to you really have a reason for it. So sometimes right. it's better off right. just to leave the camera still. <laughs> True. It, it definitely depends on, on what it is. Right. It definitely depends on what it is. And, and, and also, like, if you ever start doing client work, they're going to have their preferences, too. Sure. On top of on top of your own creative vision, they're going to they're going to say what they want on top of that. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I've gone down the rabbit hole so of sliders. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy. And, you know, there's such a wide range of sliders between um, belt-driven and then, like, you know, uh, other types of method. I don't even know. There's so many. Yeah. And then there's the mechanical versus just the, you know, um, weighted and hydraulic. Yeah. And there's so many different varieties. It's crazy. Yeah. So, you, can, you can go um, nuts with it. But Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if this is going to be a fun one, if you had to choose between, uh, long exposures of landscapes and seascapes, which is a lot of your portfolio, you've yeah. got a lot of that in there, 
or astrophotography because Ooh. you've got some of that in your portfolio. Which yeah. you <laughs> that's you can, you can only choose land, the, the long exposures right. or the astrophotography. <laughs> <laughs> can I do? Can I choose long exposure astrophotography? Is that it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that's cheating. Okay. I think that's cheating. All right. we'll, have to, we'll, have to, we'll have to go to the judges on right. that one. I think, and, <laughs> it's tough. I would probably go long exposure landscape just because I think there's a little more opportunity. I don't, I don't know. I don't, that is a hard one. I would say that just because there, it's more readily available to me. You can get it like, it, yeah, you have yeah. to wait for nightfall. You have to wait for nightfall, no clouds. You know, I think there's a little too, I mean, the challenge of astrophotography is half of the fun, but I think the, yeah. the availability I, to the long, long exposure landscape is, I would have to go with that. Higher return yeah. on investment. I, astro <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So astrophotography, one, it, it can be it can be quite expensive. Two, um, you have to have the perfect conditions. Yeah. Whereas with long exposures, you could get away with less than ideal um, conditions. Plus, you can stack on, you know, additional ND filters right. and compensate if you need to. Right. So, I, 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 I like your answer. I, I would go with that as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good. What do I win? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, you win a note from uh, Photofocus. Oh, great. We got to take a short break <laughs> to remind everybody that Photofocus has launched its own community. Head over to photofocus.com and click on the community link in the menu to join exclusive conversations and events. You get to talk with Lori all the time if you're in there too, which all is a the lot time. of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, we're, we're, we're doing all right. I, we're just introduced some daily themes and I participated in those take off a little bit. Theme. Yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> Getting things awesome. going with those. Um, so, so Todd, you recently blogged about not, uh, about not knowing what your photos are about, um, right. like that you didn't, you know, you, you've got your reasons and I'm, I'm, that's the one I'm going to ask you about. But so I, I would argue that photos also don't always have to have a meaning, um, that you can just go set up a camera and enjoy the process or just go for a walk and enjoy the process for no reason other than I want to use my camera. I want to take pictures of whatever I see. Right. Yes. Um, which I guess you could say is, is a meeting, right. That you want to, you know, that's your meaning. But at the same time, right. the photo it, that you're, the photo you capture itself of the random butterfly may have absolutely no purpose other than <laughs> you had your camera and you took a picture of it. Um, right. So can you share your thoughts about, about that? Um, uh, and we'll send everybody, Lori, please make a note. We can send people to Todd's blog article on this as well. But um, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I guess ultimately I kind of came to that same conclusion. It's okay for the photograph to not really have a meaning. It's you're just out there, you're enjoying the moment. And the point of it is to just share that beauty. Um, you know, but there's so many people or, yeah, or there's a lot of like, what's the purpose of this? Why are you, what's the motivation behind it? And uh, for me, sometimes the motivation is just the experience of being outdoors. Like that's, that's the big thing is, uh, you know, kind of one of the reasons I got into photography is it's just, I'm, I'm out in these beautiful, great places and I want a way to capture this and share it. And it just, it evolved into a more, you know, artistic version of that rather than just snapshot to remember where I've been. Like, okay, well, how do I tell the story? How do I show this passage of time, which led into my kind of interest in the longer exposures is just showing, showing the movement and the patterns and, and yeah. So, but the meaning behind it for me ultimately ended up just being the enjoyment of the moment and being out and, and just showing that beauty of the things around me, especially Minnesota. Like I love, you know, where I live and I, and I want, I want people to know about it. <laughs> I, and I think, um, one of the great opportunities that people, photographers or even, you know, hobbyists, new photographers out there, um, one of the great opportunities is that we have a fantastic camera in our pockets at all times, basically. Right. Um, so whether you want to carry a big camera or not, if you see something that sparks your interest for whatever the reason might be, and you don't have your camera on your shoulder, on your hip, whatever it is, pull that phone out of your pocket Use the built-in camera app, or use a uh, an, an app that you've downloaded for your for the for, for you know for cameras, right. and and use it. And and there's your 
you know, your meaningless photo that has a meaning to you because you just saw something, right? So, <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, and the thing is, you don't you don't have to save every single photo you take. I yeah. mean, if, if they if you're like yeah. you said, and I I went through this and I still go through this. Like, I let that question sometimes paralyze me. Like, why am I doing this? What's the purpose of these photos? Why even right. bother? Because nobody else cares what this is. This is what I saw, you know? So then I let it stop me. But then you're, I'm like, why are you doing it anyway? Well, because I, like you said, you like to get out and be in nature or you just, just doing the, the, the act of taking yep. a photo or seeing things that it, having the camera makes me see things that I might walk by if I didn't have the mm -hmm. camera with me, you know, wouldn't look at my surroundings in the same way. So it's a it's a good question, and it, it's one that I think that a lot of people struggle with sometimes with their with their mm -hmm. shots. But we don't have to save every photo. You're not hanging every photo right. on the wall. It's not all going in your portfolio. It's practice. I mean, if you look at it that way too, you have to keep practicing to keep continuing to yeah. get better, and that's just what you're doing. Yeah, right? you're, you're practicing, and you know, and even I think there's even value to just leaving the camera at home sometimes. Just yes. go for the walk yes, and look at too. it. It gives you a different yep. perspective because you're not hunting for a photograph. So you just kind of right. enjoy yep. it. And you know, back to the and that's gonna and that's gonna that that's gonna be the one chance the the one time <laughs> yeah. in your life where you're gonna be like, I should have <laughs> had my yep. camera. You know, how often do you see a bear at the top of a tree? Yeah, right. right? <laughs> but yeah, there's a bear eating an ice cream cone, you know, talking to a unicorn, yes, exactly. and I don't have anything with me. Right. <laughs> but yeah, but even, oh, yeah, even yeah, with yeah. your cell phone, even if you just take the picture with your cell phone, if nothing else, you can like geotag that location and note it and come back to it yeah. when conditions are right or whatever. Right. right. So, yeah. Right. I mean, that's, that's, um, movie uh, scouting. That's there's people whose jobs are literally just to drive around the country and find spots for movies, photograph yep, it, yep. you know, make note of its of its qualities, and then the, the Hollywood studios have an archive of scout of locations that have been scouted. They can just yeah. go to at any time, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a great thing to do. Yeah, it um, really is. Awesome. Cool. Um, all right, so we're gonna dive into some of your photos. We're gonna see some rocks. Great. Who doesn't love rocks? <laughs> oh, um, you should you should, you should see uh, your yep, photos. Yeah, I can here, see right? that. Okay, I can see that. Okay, so um, so one thing I noticed when browsing your portfolio is that yes, you have an eye for rocks, rock, um, look look alike type objects that you're you're sort of doing by the way of a drone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This one, so this one is a drone photo. We didn't even, yeah. So we didn't talk about drones yet. And I wanted to, um, bring some drone photos into this to bring that. Cause we've really, uh, what is this? The 13th or 14th, uh, episode of the photographer show. Yeah, we've never we talked about it. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, I, I specifically wanted to pull some of these. Yeah. yeah. One more um, so if you can talk that. about, <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, if you could talk about, you know, what drone you use, what kind, you know, some some of the um, aspects of this, how you accomplished it. Um, uh, uh, so, but before you do, I just want to talk about what caught my interest. Besides the fact that it's just the, what beautiful drone photo, um, it's that what caught my interest the most is the minimalist snow type photo where you've got this splash of color. That's one of my favorite type of photographs. Um, because typically when you look at a snow photo, it looks black and white right. for the most part because just the nature of how gray the day will be in snow itself being bright white. But you got a beautiful splash of color in here. So it, it like popped right off the page. Um, that's what caught my interest. If you can please share uh, a bunch about this photo, I'd we'd really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, technical side, it's a, it's a DJI, uh, uh, what is this one? Uh, the Mavic Pro 2. So it's, you know, it's got that Hasselblad nice. uh, lens on it, which is great. <laughs> um, but yeah, this this is just, it's an island in the middle of uh, Boulder Lake. It's a, it's a reservoir in Duluth, Minnesota. And so it is in the middle of a lake, but it's just frozen, everything around it. So it's just covered in snow. And this was a shot that was just in my head 
uh, where I wanted to shoot down the trees. So when you're looking at the actual trees, you don't necessarily recognize them as trees, but that early sun coming up with the long shadow of the trees looked more like the trees. Um, there's, and I don't know who took this sh sh shot, but there's a shot of camels crossing the desert. And what you notice are the shadows of the camels. Right. Exactly kind of what inspired yes. this shot for me. Yep. So I, I just, you know, and this, nice. this little lake is dotted with all these kinds of islands that are just covered in the pine trees. So that's what, and just, I wanted to get directly above it and get, get the shadows of the trees for this one. So. And, and what do you do for processing your, your drone photos? Do you just do it, use the same sort of workflow you do for regular? Yeah, photos, it doesn't, it doesn't do wild differently. It's pretty much almost all in Lightroom. I'll bounce over to Photoshop just for like any specific cloning I might have to do, but uh, I don't, I don't recall doing really anything too drastic with this one. It was a lot of lifting of shadows because that the, the island of the actual trees in the actual exposure was pretty dark. So I lifted those shadows a little bit. Um, but mostly I just stayed in Lightroom with that and did some basic, you know, highlight shadow adjustments. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. It's so cool. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's okay. look at the next one. So this one, um, this one, it, my guess was that it's either a drone photo and the rock is way bigger than you think, or you're just on a tripod and you're looking straight down at a rock right right overhead and you just happen to angle it right so you don't get your, your own shadow in it. Um, it's got to be one of those two. <laughs> <laughs> but the answer is B. Uh, it, is, it is a smaller rock uh, in, that is in Salt Lake City. That's at the, at the salt flats out there in the, in the lake. Uh, nice. Yeah, and that mud was treacherous. That's what I remember about that. that. Like I've, I was kind of looking for that one little lone rock, and I liked this one just because it had that little hint of color that was different than everything else around it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that, that yeah. oh, that mud, yeah. one misstep, and you were you were ankle deep into suction town. Hard to yeah. Really? I love the shoe. I love the shoe that It looks that really dry. <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> Because from this image, it looks like right. it's really and, dry. And, and that particular spot, yeah. it was. But about four feet to my left, it was not. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. <laughs> but that was, yeah. That's great. Yeah, definitely. Um, if, if, from, if you were to step back and you don't know it's a tiny rock, you know, on the ground, it really does look like it could be some sort of pathways through through a bunch of, you know, big rocks and then there's one that's really right. sticking out it, it it's like a like a mouse maze almost um in, you know <laughs> but so uh, yeah I, lo I loved it because of that splash of color too standing out too it definitely definitely stood yeah, out that's 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 what grabbed me to, to that rock in particular I, I remember i was probably looking for a lone rock for about an hour out there and i finally found one <laughs> and then i spent another 20 minutes trying to get my shadow out of the shot <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't carry a pocket I full of rocks with you in case you need to place them somewhere. <laughs> Maybe I should start. Oh, well, that just makes the backpack heavier, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, that's makes true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cheating anyway. Can you imagine? You can imagine. Oh boy. Um, all right. So uh, more with the rocks. So. We talked earlier about mm -hmm. long exposures. <laughs> Obviously, this is a nice long exposure. So um, this is one of my favorite type of long exposures. When you do see the rock perfectly clear through yeah. foggy or or smoothed water, or whatever, it just it's it's such a fun type of photo. And that um, this is definitely a fun photo as well. Uh, so I, I great job on this one. And again, the rock totally stands out. Of course, that beautiful splash right. of color on it. Um, does this, ha does this happen water, to be a winter? Just, uh, I, is, is this winter too? Is that I'm trying snow? to remember. This was San Francisco, if I'm remembering where I got this one. I think this was the Black Sand Beach in San Francisco. Uh, and I don't... It was probably fall. I think it was fall. Late right. fall, probably. I would have to actually go back and find that right. and look at the EXIF data. But, <laughs> but yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. If that's, Sounds good. So in San Francisco, that was the only red rock on that beach. And that's what drew me to that one. Was that rock was different than everything else. It was just a bunch mm. of gray rocks except for that guy right there. 
<laughs> did you get any photos of this rock surrounded by boring rocks? I, I didn't. Or, or did I did you just not get, get that one surrounded that by boring rocks. It, that one was pretty well isolated too, which was, it just kind of made me think that like some alien had dropped that one there. Like, it was, <laughs> that, that rock did not belong. Just, just for yeah. you to photograph. Yep. Yeah. Just for you to photograph. You never know. It could actually right. be yes. an alien. Yeah. That right. just, it's probably it just, hatched you know, and moved on since then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way the water looks like smoke, though. It, it yeah. makes it look yeah. smoky now instead of like water. If it weren't for the sand, but even with the sand, you know, yeah. it could be smoke. Yeah, that was just, then that one was just sitting there and waiting for the waves to actually run back out before I tripped the shutter on that one. Just because I, I liked better the way the pattern of the waves was going away from me than right, towards right. me. And it revealed that rock better going out yeah, than the, coming in. Right. The the movement you see going around the rock definitely has it, you know, yeah. brings it to life for sure. Like it, it makes it feel like there's actually, like, like, like the rock is alive. It's actually doing yep. something to yeah. cause it, right? Um, so it's cool. All right. The last photo um, is another yep. drone photo. And this is another one of my favorite type of drone photos when people go and they photograph icebergs. Yep. Right. It's just it, there's something so beautiful about a white piece of ice floating on top of nice, deep blue water from overhead. It just looks gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so and again, there is a theme here. All of the photos kind of resemble yeah. rocks. Hey, well. <laughs> So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there's, there's, oh, no. Certainly, there's some rocks in that first one, and you know, it's, this one looks like a rock at any rate. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is just a, a, um, a sheet of ice. You know, this was this was late winter, early spring, Lake Superior, when the ice starts to break up and float away. And I was this is at a nearby park by my house. And I just went out flying the drone in the afternoon and oh. got this one. This one was just, you know, from the air, this one just looked so huge and still isolated. And it just, it just, I don't know. There was something about the, the blueness of the water and everything that just kind of spoke to me on this one. And I just thought it was, I thought it was a great shot. So I grabbed it. Well, the ripples along the side where, yeah. where the light has hit yeah. the, the ripples of the water are the same shapes that are in the ice, right. you know, like kind of. So it echoes the shapes true, in the, on the snow true. on the ice, too. How yep. far up I do you think you were? Probably from it? right at my up? legal limit of 400 feet. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I, I try to obey the rules. Did, did, so cool. <laughs> did you get did you get certified or or, or do you just, yeah no uh, I, I am, I am not I'm not certified <laughs> right. for any commercial flight I do register my drone is registered okay. but I, I'm not certified for any sort of commercial okay. flight or anything you know I do use the apps to see yeah, what the airspace yeah. is like cool. and if I'm allowed to fly but anymore the DJI app will tell you if you are somewhere you shouldn't be yeah and I think even they'll go so far as to restrict so your flight so far I'm not sure yes yeah they won't yeah, yeah they won't actually let you go um yes yeah, so the 400 wow. 400 was your was your match yeah. for this spot yeah. that you could go yeah i guess okay yeah it's uh, it's it's cool i so i i have a friend who does real estate and is trying to uh find a drone photographer that, in the area that's yeah. certified and uh we know a lot of photographers that have drones but none of right. them are certified they all just they all do it for for fun and they go they go right. what their what their legal limit is and that's yeah that's it. So, but when you do it for, when you do it for paid work, right. now you have to go and get certified. So yeah. Whether, um, was right. it difficult? Well, was it difficult to learn how to no, use? Was it difficult to they learn are how to use it? Nearly idiot proof. I mean, you can wreck them. I've done it. Really? But. <laughs> right. No, I've seen people that have wrecked them and stuff too, but I yeah. just, cause for, for me, I keep thinking, I've been thinking about it ever since they've been out, you know, because it's just That's, a whole new yeah. perspective. Yeah. And way of seeing things, and I'm like, you know, it, it makes yeah. me kind I mean, of want to try really, one. Maybe you, I should just try uh, one. Maybe I should just get one of those little ones and mess around. The, the SE, the new SE, is what I was, uh, what I've been thinking. Three hundred dollar, you know, drone to get started. It's like DJI. Yeah. Like, finally, they got there. Yeah. And they had to, right? Um, I, I'm curious. Do you use mm. a controller, or do you? I use, use your phone I use, as a, controller. As I use a controller. I use a controller, controller. With, with the phone on as the auxiliary screen. Um, but right. yeah, 
Yeah. You find, you find that to be easier. Yeah, I do. I, I don't, I flying it with the phone just feels too, like I'm playing a bad video game that I've downloaded from the app store kind of a thing. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could, could you see yourself ever using the goggle thing? I, that they have know, came out I with? don't, I don't know if I would, I think I might find that too disorienting to just like see also, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. the responsible side is you're supposed to be watching the drone I, as well. <laughs> and I do, I'm like, I'm up and down between the two because I'm sure I'm going to run into a tree any moment. Right. And 90% of the right. time I'm flying out over water, which is just dumb. <laughs> so I'm like, mm. like if it goes down, I'm losing <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not yeah, getting, no back. getting back for that one. Um, yeah, if yeah, you do get yeah. it back, it's probably not going to work. No amount of rice is <laughs> bringing that thing back to life. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Um, yeah, it's, it, I, I've always wanted to get one as well. Um, actually, you don't I was have at a drone? The, no. I'm no, shocked. I I'm shocked. Yeah, I, I actually, on behalf of Photofocus, I did go to um, the uh, Mavic 2 announcement in Brooklyn, New York. I was actually at the, the press conference at the live stream and stuff. Um, and... It was so busy at that, which nowadays you'd be like, "Oh my god, I can't believe there was that many people in a one building." <laughs> but um, uh, it was so busy, I couldn't even get like I couldn't even get to the point where I got my hands on it to try it. It was, yeah. it was just too many people. I'm sure so, that was the um, that was the hot it, item it's, too. It's, Everyone was like, "Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah." Hasselblad lens yep. and a drone. It was like, yep. I was one of those people. Folks, I was right? like, "Yes, um, take my money, please." Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I did. I yeah. bought that drone um, mostly as a camera, more than anything. Like, I'm like, this is that's a great. Mm. Yeah. Well, what else would you yeah, use I mean, it for? I, I can't even imagine just, using know, it for anything else. And fly that, around for fun. My brain. I mean, I've got double fun. Oh, I guess well, you, you could do. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you could do a time lapse with it, and they actually yeah, have a time lapse mode. Yeah, it's a mode on it, right. which is um, you know. It's it, you can do yeah. a lot of stuff. I one of the first things I did was to go out and do a hyperlapse with it, uh, out over, out over a little island in somewhere in Southern California. I don't remember where I was, but it and then immediately low low battery warning halfway through I, the flight. I was like, ah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I feel like the first thing I would do is uh, I forgot what they call the mode, but it's the one where it's like that old Hollywood effect where they would. Um, Fly in yeah. and zoom out at the same time, yeah, yeah. or, or reverse. You can, that, oh, right. you can do that with the with uh, the Mavic Zoom. Uh, so there's yeah, there's the two of them. Yeah, mine's mine's a fixed lens, so it, it won't do <laughs> it doesn't do that push pull. But that is a great right. looking effect for a video for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're getting near the end here. Can you share a tip for photographers about a technique or equipment? Um, uh, you've already shared a bunch, but if you can share one uh, final tip for photographers, uh, we'd, uh, we'd for appreciate photographers. Um, here's the here's the one I'm struggling with myself, um, and it is to not get hung up on the conditions. Like I will, I, I sit here and I will look out a window and I go, ah, it's a cloudy day, I don't want to go. And it's easy to convince yourself not to go, but chances are there's a good shot to be had in those. And you know, whatever the conditions are, something is right. Go there, anyway. You know, yeah. I have a I have a friend and a, yep, I have a friend and a mentor and when you go through his program, one of the weeks that he takes you through is is yeah. called go anyway and it's it's just that. It it, it could be conditions right. or your frame of mind or whatever it is, but his thing is to just yeah. just pick up your camera right. and go anyway. You know, because it, it can be it can be, you know, people don't go at noon because the lights too harsh. Yeah, you can find a lot, lot of cool shadows, shadows when the light is harsh. Rest, I mean, there's but, there's yeah. you know, there's yeah, always yeah. something to be found, no matter yeah. what the weather yeah. is or whatever, you know. Yes. So that's that's a good tip because a lot yeah. of people don't. They're like, it's raining. Yeah. My camera will get wet or, you most know, of, whatever. Most of them are waterproof now. There's just always, <laughs> there's always something yeah. to find that you can shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Good tip. <laughs> the, uh, the, the only time this doesn't apply is if you're a drone I, photographer. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to go out. You, if it's a tornado True. or a hurricane, do I not bring your house. Out. Snow is okay. I've done it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that Snow would be okay. fun. That would uh, be fun I, video. I was on a trip to uh, Colorado with a bunch of guys, and uh, we we went up to one of the mountains, and um, I, I forgot I forgot what the elevation was, but it was pretty high up. It was super windy, 
It was pre-sunrise, and he whipped out his drone, and he had a hard time controlling that sucker yeah. with high winds up a mountain. So, and and it's thin, air, you know, yes. thin Colorado air. So, um, yeah. So, but when it comes to a regular camera, I completely agree. Yeah. I don't care what yeah. the conditions are. It's you know, yep. take it out yeah. and, and like, just have fun. Um, yeah. And worst case. Uh, Optech makes a uh, cheapy, cheapy rain cover. So if you're right. really paranoid, six dollars yeah. for a pack of three they rain just, covers, and yeah. you get a grocery yep. bag and a rubber seat. band, cut a hole in it, oh. you're good. You know, you can do exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> yep. That's all you need to. Yeah. Yeah. Use, use the lens, use lens hood. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there we and go. We brought it back around. <laughs> Yay! Good job. <laughs> 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 awesome. Uh, so, Todd, if you can share uh, where everybody can find you, we'll, of course, link to it in the uh, in the in the show notes when we publish this on PhotoFocus. But if you can yeah, share where everybody great. can my, find uh, you, my website is toddhphoto.com, uh, and from there are the links to the various socials. Um, but yeah, you can find find everything about me and all all the things I'm doing there. It's awesome. a, it's an awesome site too, and I like like you you like Scott said he went through. Yeah. I read that same blog post that he did too. Um, but you have some really good content in there. And, and even I, when I said you were going to be on the show, Brian was like, you have, you need more people to find you because you have, you do have good content that that's meaningful stuff that I think resonates with people from you. You just seem to write like what you're feeling and yeah. thinking about and, I need to have more feelings you know, and more it's, thoughts. Uh, it was a to good, write about. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. but thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's, you know, right. you know awesome. it's, it is kind of just like a good creative outlet too, just a place to go and not vent, yeah. but just this is what I'm thinking about and how I feel about the art form. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Yep. It helps the creative it, process. It definitely absolutely to does. It's, that's a new through. habit. Yeah. It's a new habit. Just whether or not any, yeah, whether or not anybody else sees. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's awesome. I cool. will. Thank well, you for well, having you came me. On the show. It was a lot awesome. of fun. I appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we will uh, chat again soon. Uh, keep keep uh, going at photographing those rocks and rock like formations. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be hunting <laughs> for some rocks tomorrow. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, and uh, have a have a great rest of your day. Terrific. You too. Thank you so much.